We talk about our object of rotary. The object. In some areas of the rotary weekly club meetings, they begin, all the members actually are standing and reciting the object of rotary. It's a little bit different. Should be control and F. Excuse me, just for a second. How's that work? That's better? Good. Thank you. All right. All right. Just keep them on, keep that one on mute. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. In some areas of the world, weekly rotary meetings begin with all members standing and reciting the actual object of the rotary, the statement, which comes from the constitution of rotary. It's frequently seen on a wall plaque in Rotarian's offices and places of business. You think of the four-way test, right? That was interesting to see. The object of Rotary is to encourage and foster the ideal of service as a basis of worthy enterprise. Interesting. The statement lists four areas by which this ideal of service is fostered. Through the development of acquaintance as the opportunity for service, the promotion of high ethical standards in business and professions, through service in one's personal, business, and community life, and the advancement of international understanding, goodwill, and peace. The object of Rory was not always has has not always been expressed in this manner. The original constitution in 1906 had three objects, and then along the years they continued to develop four objects, six objects, and change it. And so the last major change was made in 1951 when the objects, quote unquote, were streamlined and changed to a single one object, which is manifested in our four separate streamlined and changed, <clears throat> in our four separate streamlined objects. The ideal of service is the key phrase in the object of Rotary. The ideal is an attitude of being a thoughtful and helpful person in all of one endeavors. That's what the object truly means. So, how many of y'all knew we had an object for our rotary? Yeah, Lord. <laughs> I mean, vision statement, mission statement, four-way test, um, all of that. So, the, the object of what it truly is. So, again, we are Zooming today. I apologize for any, any interruptions or inconsistencies with that. Um, but please be patient with us and we'll continue to... Um, make sure that the experience is, is much much improved. This evening, a reminder, we have the second meeting of our Romanian After Hours Club. This is a social gathering. Uh, we will take the opportunity at this meeting to induct a new Rotarian. So if we can, she's not here today, but uh, she will be. We can give her a round of applause. Uh, Ms. Kelly Stewart, she will be inducted this, this evening at 6.30. For our We're very excited to have her. She is an educator from the Maurice area, uh, and she is also ecstatic about the opportunities that we'll be able to do. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn over the meeting to Terry Landry to introduce our very exciting uh, program for today. We're excited today to have a tornado from Captain with us. Uh, <laughs> Melissa Gendry <laughs> is our um, esteemed guest today. She is a councilwoman and the mayor pro tem of Kaplan. She was born in Kaplan, graduated from the How This Happened with Montebello in New Orleans, and married Kevin Gendry, which some of you probably knew. She raised her family back home in Kaplan, where she taught school. Kaplan Elementary as a pre-K co-teacher for 24 years. After 37 years of marriage to Kevin, <clears throat> he died unexpectedly, and Melissa was appointed in May 2016 to fill the District D seat left vacant by Kevin's death. 
Three months later, she was elected to that position and was re-elected then again in March of 2018. Her service to Kaplan includes adopting budgets and legislation, assuming mayoral duties in the absence of the mayor, and in the past administration, she served as the chairperson of the Utility Committee and was a member of the Finance and Industrial Inducement Committee. Currently, she's the chairperson of the Police, Safety, and Fire Committee, a member of the Streets and Drainage Committee, and she serves as chairperson for Encore Community Retirement Board. During the period of June of 2017 through November of 2018, she also has worked on and been instrumental in the process of Kaplan becoming established as a retirement community. Uh, and you're going to hear and, and hear her, but you can see the work, the, the product of the work that she has done in this regard. As a volunteer in Kaplan since 07, she has been serving as president of the director of the Kaplan Food Bank, which you're all familiar with, as philanthropic chairperson of the Chez Elise, which is a women's civic group in Kaplan, and for 10 years as secretary treasurer of Kaplan Arts Council. And today, she has Vanna with her, but we call Vanna Eve Dale Morrison, who is also a city councilwoman uh, representing District A in Kaplan. So um, she could wow us with any number of topics, I'm sure, when you look at these credentials. Paul had the pleasure of serving on the committee with her, and he says, whatever you do, you be sure and tell her that she is a real go-getter. So help you welcome a go-getter, Melissa Gidry. about the retirement community. It's, it's a passion that I have, um, and just so glad it came to fruition. Being established as a certified retirement community includes Kaplan in a state leveling, marketing effort, networking opportunities, and possible grant funding. The program is designed to encourage tourism and economic development. It was led with teamwork from the dedicated community retirement board and community leaders and I will say this right now, uh, Mr. Paul Bougereau had served on the board as well as Councilwoman Eva Del Morrison. And she's passing out uh, some handouts right now. And, and I'm going to get over the, uh, go ahead and read over that with you. It's just the three top games that got Kaplan as a retirement community. It is a five year program with the Office of Lieutenant Billy Nungesser and the Office of Tourism. Today, you will learn about the three qualities Kaplan demonstrated to make it to a premier location for retirees, and those are the top gains. Since its establishment on February 26, 2019, events have transpired, giving attention to the community of Kaplan, and they are Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser presented information about tourism and the retirement community at the City Council meeting in Kaplan on March 19, 2019, received attention in the form of television, radio interviews, newspaper mention, and rousing support from all affected. Received a list of potential retirees interested in Kaplan. State honors at the LMA 2019 convention. And for having an outstanding project promoting progress in municipal services and operation for economic development. On August 29, 2019, received recognition on becoming a certified Louisiana retirement area from Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. On January 9, 2020, met at Kaplan City Hall with an architect from Arizona who has interest in architecture plans to develop in Kaplan. Since March 13th of this year, COVID-19 hit the country, putting residents at a risk of developing the virus and placing a hold on marketing Kaplan. But through faith, we will continue to get the information known to the community. So if you would go ahead and, and the handouts that were uh, given to you by Councilwoman Eva Del Morrison, I will go over them and it's a brief summary on the three top gains that demonstrated the <coughs> establishment of becoming a retirement community. So if you would draw your attention on that section, please. The first is safety, second is housing availability, and third is uh, hospital care. So we're going to go over those real quick. 
Okay, the first one, safety, if you draw your attention to that section. Um, Kaplan has an active, fully funded and staffed police department, as well as the protection of the remaining power sheriff's office. Because of this, Kaplan boasts very low crime index among communities of its size across the state and the nation. And that's the first quality that actually the state looks for is safety. So in Kaplan right now, we still do maintain uh, being uh, one of the first ones to be able to have uh, safety in our community and we want to maintain that as well. So if you look at the statistics, um, we have, if you want to bring it to crime index comparison, Crime rate in Calvin, uh, Louisiana is 71% lower than the average of the whole state of Louisiana. And when compared to the national average, it's 61% lower. Okay, so if you want to move on to the next, healthcare services with our hospital. I want to say this, in Calvin, the hospital is close proximity to residents. Okay, they don't have to worry about getting a taxi, okay? They can walk, use their bikes. We have walking paths. So we just recently, there's been close to three years that we do have our walking paths available for our residents in Kaplan. So, uh, and it's near the school, a uh, very location, like I said, for retirees to be able to walk to that area if they need to, or they don't have to have a taxi. It's close proximity where they don't have to uh, drive far to get good health care, okay? Um, and here it says healthcare availability, if you want to follow along with that handout, please. Uh, Kaplan is home to a major acute care hospital, a variety of physicians, natural pharmacies, and locally owned establishments, as well as long-term care facilities, ensuring that aging residents and their families have access to quality care without ever leaving Kaplan. And then below, it, it, all, it, uh, it states below about um, for the services that expanded from that and it offered to Kaplan's residents. Uh, they have telemedicine field gaps in care and expected access to medical specialists providing 24-7 services with a hospitalist or cardiologist around the clock. The hospital's partnership with Cardiovascular Institute of the South specifically enhanced its cardiology services. Okay, and if you want to... At the bottom here, it also says uh, Abram Kaplan Memorial Hospital offers a skilled nursing and rehabilitation program. The program is 24-7 daycare, focused on restoring health and independence to patients who need a little extra care. And on the next one, it talks about the 24-hour emergency room. It is staffed with experienced physicians and also chronic care management services. Kaplan is home to Kaplan Healthcare Center with Vermilion Healthcare Center, short and long-term care facilities offering nursing and rehabilitation services. Vermilion Healthcare Center is also a secure Alzheimer's facility with dementia certified staff on site 24 hours a day. Abram Kaplan Memorial Hospital skilled nursing and rehabilitation program accepts Medicaid, Medicare and private insurance reimbursements. Okay? And on our very last page for that, the home health care for those residents who need in-home assistance, Kaplan Home Care and Abram Kaplan Memorial Home Health Care offer that alternative in care. Okay. And we talked about the 24-hour medical service. I will just say this, Kaplan is also part of the Acadian Ambulance Medical Transportation Networking Insurance residents are transported to the most appropriate facilities and care possible at any hour of the day. Acadian Ambulance offers membership packages that include on-call mobile alert devices to dispatch to their emergency services also. Now I wanna say this, last I got to the report, employees on average um, at, at Abram Kaplan Hospital that are employed, 90% are from Vermillion Parish. If you want to turn to our Abram Kaplan Memorial Hospital and whenever they were recognized, I will briefly talk about that. In 2019, uh, they received honors on being named top 20 in critical access hospital list. And there it just reads, it gives you the, top, the, uh, the critical access hospital winners and also the hospitals who have achieved success in the overall performance. And it's there for you reading and you can go back and, uh, and read that as well. 
Okay, third is our local housing availability. Not all retirees are financially set with a lot of cash flow, okay? To retire along the beaches of Florida, okay? So we wanna give them an opportunity, okay? And let them know what we have to offer. So Kaplan gives retirees an option to live in a low prime area, good health care, and affordable housing. So if you wanna to turn to that section and I'll go ahead and touch on that. Uh, current local housing market, based on the 2018 estimates, the median home value in Kaplan is $89,175. There are four low income housing apartment complex, complexes which contain 234 affordable, affordable apartments to rent in Kaplan. And it goes on to list the, the rest as well. Now, I will say this, research has shown that retirees, whenever they want to retire, they will go into another job. That is called real estate. Okay, I interviewed, I interviewed uh, several retirees who were real estate developers and uh, they were already retired. You know, so uh, it just grew their interest, so I wrote it down. Uh, and like I said before, we have an architect who is interested in uh, developing in Kaplan. But with the COVID-19 right now, as you all know, everything is on, on hold. I did talk to our Lieutenant Governor Billy Mangester a couple of weeks ago. He was in New Orleans at the time. And uh, we just have to continue promoting what we have here in Louisiana. And I don't know if y'all noticed, viewing, he did do a commercial. I don't know if y'all saw it. Uh, I saw it last night for the first time. And he told me he was doing a commercial uh, to look out for it. So uh, Mr. Paul had mentioned earlier he would like to have him here as a guest. Uh, and I think that's a wonderful idea because Billy does promote this state. I've watched him. I had the opportunity to work with him for over two years and grown very uh, high respect for him. And he does a lot for our state, and we're very lucky to have him. So I'm going to touch base on that. Uh, employment and volunteer opportunities. We went ahead and listed the top employers. CapTel, Vermillion Bank, Captain Government, uh, School Board, Abram uh, Capital Memorial Hospital, Slimco, and Acadiana Ford. I will say uh, Acadiana Ford, I'm sure you have heard that they have uh, set their sights on building uh, right out of Maurice. But speaking with the owner, Mr. Don, he said that they're gonna keep the used car lot sale in Kaplan along with their service department. So that is there to stay as of right now. So, and our volunteer opportunities, they are listed with the churches, the charities, uh, and I will say this, uh, nonprofit, uh, Eva Dale and I uh, service Kaplan Food Bank. Uh, I'm the president, director, she's the vice president there. So uh, there's a lot of volunteer opportunities, uh, such as a, a retiree. What else can I do? I come to Kaplan, what can I do to help the volunteer? Well, you service the people's needs and it gives you humanity. It makes you feel better, okay? Uh, if you're able to serve somebody's needs, not their wants, because if you serve somebody's wants, you'll never fulfill those needs. And that's what we do in Kaplan, fulfill their needs. All right, move on. Let's see. Uh, and it goes on Kaplan Arts Council. Madeline D. Horace, we had the opportunity to work with her as well. Eva Dell and I, she served with us on the Kaplan Arts Council. Uh, so thank you, Madeline. She has given her uh, service with us. Thank you. Uh, if you want to move on with the narrative, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's just there for your reading. So that way you can get an insight. It includes a, a project description, its intended purposes and effectiveness, day of inception, conclusion, operation, and budget. So later on you can go and you can view that and read it. Um, and I'll just move on. And towards the back, we have some captions, some pictures uh, that were actually this. Everything that I'm reading to you today it, 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 this was submitted to the state, but it's just a small portion of what was submitted. Just keep in mind, these were the three top gains of quality. But I also included some of the captions, the pictures, uh, if you want to uh, view those. Um, Kaplan is home of country music great, Sammy Kershaw, and it's hardly without a chance for you to dance along to live music, indoors or out. Uh, now, we also went ahead and put a picture of his that we have in this on the street. And also there is a um, Crawfish Haven, Mr. Barry Toops owns that operation. Uh, I visit there several times, and it's a very, very good location, very nice place. And each spring, Kaplan is home to its very own fashion, family-friendly Mardi Gras. 
celebration, complete with parade and street party hosted by the crew, Chicola Pond. Okay, for further information on the very last sheet in the back, it's there for you for you to read, and if you want to contact me, you can contact me, and this is where you can. For further information about today's topic, Captain's Retirement Designation, you can contact Councilwoman Melissa Gidry by email at districtd at kaplanla.com. By phone, 337-223-1667. Home phone is 337-643-1806. I would encourage you to uh, look up on the internet the uh, Louisiana Retirement website. Go to uh, the website that's available there. So if you're interested, I'm available after the session today for a little while. Uh, to present more uh, material, and I have it up here. Um, and if you have any questions, you can ask me then, or you can call me, or you can email me. Okay? Now, this is one thing I always leave after I speak. How is success measured? Does anybody know? How is success measured? How do you measure success? Being obedient to God. That's how we measure success. Okay? Keep that in mind. Amen. All right. <laughs> Any questions? Listen, gentlemen, a little bit about that big fine girl over there. You want me to? Yeah, wait till you get that fine girl together. You took the words out of my mouth. I called it her Bible. That's my Bible. developer in New Orleans 
when I started this back in 2017, he says, I took him this binder and he said, you got one thing missing. I said, what is that? Um, he said, get you some potential uh, retirees throughout the state first to see if they would be interested. So I did that and we got a list. And uh, so I toured the state, made phone calls and toured the state on that. And if somebody doesn't know what your community has, then step up. If you have a passion for it, step up. Show them what, what you have in your community, okay? Because you don't know what people go through, where they want to stay. You don't know. Just put it out there, okay? Uh, and show them what you have. Okay, I'll take questions. Mark, we have some questions. Um, Tom, you have a question? Okay. That's one of the technical difficulties we have to correct, so we're working on that. Anybody else has a question online? Okay. Okay, the ones who are attending by Zoom, um, you can contact me at districtd at kaplanla.com, um, or you can call my, my cell phone, 337-223-1667. I don't mind giving that out as well as my home phone, 337-643-1806. And you, you can email me, and I'll, I'll address whatever questions that you may have, okay? The uh, version the bucket, you said there was an architect. Mm -hmm. Is there like a plan community, long-term? You can just repeat the question if you don't mind in the mic. Oh, just repeat. Okay, he's asking if the architect has a long-term uh, plan about developing in Kaplan, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, yes he does. Um, and it's just very premature right now because we were talking about it and looking at plans for it and then the COVID-19 hit. So that's just like on a stand. So, and this person's from Arizona, so we just have to kind of yeah, hold off. Um, and I will mention this to um, someone from the state is interested um, in developing in Kaplan as well. And I will say this, because he served on the state and court, and he's in the picture with us, um, board, and he saw, you know, the, uh, in Kaplan, he's like, wow, you know, um, I see what you mean. You know, and he says, I see what you mean um, that we could develop there. Um, and like I said, it's all in God's plan. God, I didn't do this by myself. God planted the seed and I listened, okay? So that's how you measure your success, don't forget, okay? I would always say that. All right. Anybody else? Oh, and I will say this. If it comes to fruition later on, uh, hopefully, because it's still the unknown, we don't know, you know, what's going to happen in our country, in our communities. But I will say this. We still have to govern. We still have to move forward. We still have to do what's right, okay, for our communities. And we work in all this together. You know, I'm saying it's in Kaplan, yes, but it's going to impact the parish, okay? It will. Okay?
that. So outstanding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> outstanding. Outstanding. All right, we got a couple of things for you guys. Uh, that task that we need you to do. But first off, I'd like to present you with uh, our Rotary Cup, uh, which has our four-way test, which we talked about, which we decided in the beginning. And then also our official club banner. And then I have a couple of tasks for you to do, if you don't mind. This was taken for a free meal for our military. Daniel Broussard, not here. We'll just look at try it again. Richard Dubois, not here. Well. Is it they online? They count, yeah. Oh, Richard Dubois? No, Richard Primo. Richard Primo, yeah. And Judge Edwards, not here. So three strikes they out. And I got one more thing for you. For our little lotto here so to draw a ticket. And the last three digits is seven six five. <laughs> Terry, you got it, Terry. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> right here. Take the right card. Wrong card. Five of clubs. And I also have, um, for those of you who may have not received your rotary pin, I can, I can bring these with me. We have the rotary uh, um, opens opportunities pin, which we started giving from the, the very first meeting. Please come and get one with me if you have not received one or if you need one. Um, and that will go ahead and adjourn our meeting for today. <laughs>